Good day to all of you. My name is Mr. Vince Claymark Jero M. Amabilis, and together with Ms. May Angela Takananta, we're going to discuss Lesson 6, which is entitled, Discover Literature as a Tool to Assert One's Unique Identity and Better Understand Other People. Let's go now first with the learning objectives. After going through this module, you or the students are expected to Number one, identify the genres of literature. Number two, infer the character traits being exemplified. And number three, appreciate how the selection serves as an avenue in asserting Filipino identity. After the learning objectives, we have now the what do I need to know? What do the students need to know? Okay, so according to this, the module will help you master to discover literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. The scope of this module permits it to be used in many different learning situations. Part 2 is that the language used recognizes the diverse vocabulary level of students. The lessons are arranged to follow the standard sequence of the course and the order in which you can read them can be changed to correspond with the textbook you are now using. After this, we're going to the module, which is divided into two lessons. Here in this module, the lesson is divided into two, which is which namely the lesson one, which is the genres of literature, and the lesson two, which is the appreciation of text as an avenue in asserting Filipino identity. After tackling these things, let's go now to our basically our motivation or exercise for today. What can you say? Okay, so the main objective is you have to give your idea about the proto presented in the slide. But don't worry, just be yourself. Answer confidently with the question because all of the things imaginable or real things that you are thinking is acceptable with the answer. So you just can be yourself confidently answering the things that all the things that comes to your mind whenever you see the picture. So you don't have to think of anything complicated. Just be yourself and just look at the picture and then answer based on what you can understand by us showing this picture to all of you. After our basic motivation, let's go now to the context of the lesson that starts with the question, what is literature? According to definition, literature comes from the Latin word litera, which means acquaintance with letters. It is a body of work either written, oral, or visual containing imaginative language that realistically portrays thoughts, emotions, and experiences of the human condition. So it's basically about all of us. Literature is for us and literature is built upon us people who live in this world. With different characters we are in, we can all fit to the different contexts and genres of literature. Let's go now to the list of literary genres. There's so much from this list, but I will make sure that you will all understand it one by one. Number one is drama, very much familiar to all of us. Stories are composed in verse or poetry, prose rather, usually for theatrical performance, where conflicts and emotion are expressed through dialogue and action. So this is basically what we have done during our high school days. You know, as a grade 7 student, we can uh, experience this drama in different forms and ways. Just wait for that opportunity to come and be excited because drama is really, really exciting. A really, really exciting activity that all of us can and will definitely experience as time goes by. Let's go now. Of course, we, we, we need to learn some of the things about drama. So this segment, trivia time. Did you know Philippine television drama, also known as teleserie, Filipino telenovelas or P-drama is a form of melodramatic serialized fiction in the television of the Philippines. Teleserie, which is all very familiar of, is derived from two Filipino words. Tele, which is short for television, and serie, which means series. So basically, we all know the television, the ang provinciano, all of those things that are Philippine drama. So we can all connect ourselves to the concept of drama. We can all understand what drama is in terms of concept 
context, reality, and of course with our applications when the time goes by. Next to drama is we have now the fable. Fable is a narration demonstrates a useful truth, especially in which animals speaks as humans. A legendary supernatural tale. So basically, if you're going to see animals who are walking, well, that's normal. But if you saw them talking, and that's something that's extraordinary because that's something that is unusual, right? Or maybe unrealistic. But here in Fable, with the genre Fable, the animals are talking and they're the basis of the character of some of the um, values that children use to get for. So uh, we better understand this. We have, of course, another information. Did you know the stories told by fables are usually very simple to understand the fable? The reader or listener does not need to know all about the characters. Only one important thing. For this reason, animals are often used in fables in a way that is easily understood because it is always the same. They keep the same characteristics from story to story so that people, especially children, will not be confused about the character, for example, of a lion, of a shark, of a donkey. Then uh, it must be the same as the image process, even with the applications and maybe in text or speech, it will always be the same. So let's go now with the examples for us to better understand. A lion is noble, for example, a rooster is boastful, a peacock is proud, a fox is cunning, a wolf is fierce, a horse is brave, and a donkey is hardworking. So there are references who can uh, testify the effectiveness of these characters whenever they are played with such roles that is being given here as well. So after the fable, which about the talking animals in a certain literature uh, literature works. No? Let's go now to the thing that we are all very familiar of. This is the fairy tale. Basically, the story about fairies or other magical creatures, usually for children. Well, uh, I can agree to this one. That this is a story about fairies or other magical creatures. However, in terms of judging this, that this is usually for children. Well, in our time today, I don't think so. Because many of us, especially teachers, um, literally love fairy tale until now at our age. Okay, so... We can get the concept of fairy tale and how it moves along with us, how it appreciates, how we, we appreciate this to be, to be our conceptual motivation so that we can be ourselves and, and exp express ourselves in different ways. Uh, maybe in a way, like for example, uh, you're imagining yourself to be a, 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 a character or sound of fairy tale inspired movies, then that's good. Basically, we all we are all familiar with the concept of fairy tale. But to better understand and to have additional learning of this, I will just give you, let's have some fairy tale facts. I know we are all familiar with the character up front, like here, Cinderella and then Rapunzel, but I will tell something that is not maybe known uh, in this, I mean, not only this country, but in the whole world. So it's a fact. No? So the French version, the first one is Rapunzel, of Rapunzel doesn't have a happy ending, just like what we all know, it's a happy ending. But the truth here is, in the French version, it doesn't have a happy ending. Instead of finding a happily ever after, Rapunzel turns into a frog and the prince gets cursed with a pig's snout. So it's not really the fortunate fate that Rapunzel's have a happy ending, but it turns to be some of the, like a kind of entertaining humoristic in which uh, Rapunzel turns into a frog and the prince gets cursed with a pig's snout, something that's very unusual. But maybe the reason why it was changed is because of that... Um, Students, especially children, will understand and easily appreciate and perceive the context of the story. They make it successful. But the fear thing here is it has something different that we have all to uh, we have all understand as a fact no? uh, so that we can um, um, flex this to those people who are a fan of Rapunzel for a long time. After Rapunzel, we have now the Cinderella. The very first tale of Cinderella was written in China around 850 AD. So basically, China is the country of origin of Cinderella. How come that she is not Chinita, right? <laughs> and over 700 versions of the story have been recorded from around the world. In the first version of the story, Cinderella's slipper is actually made of gold, not glass. So just like how we perceive and see visually not the slippers of Cinderella like a glass, basically in China, 
it is made of gold, not of glass. So originally, Cinderella is too rich that her shoes is made, to, or her sleepers rather, was made of gold. So there we are. After the fairy tale, let's go now to another familiar concept or genre of literature, which is fantasy. Okay, fiction with a stranger, otherworldly settings, characters, fiction which invites suspension or reality. Basically, the things that are not really existing, no? you can easily judge a uh, fantasy in reality. If something is real, then that's a uh, reality. Something is not real, then it could be fiction or fantasy. But let's go first with fantasy because it has magical application of the things that is discussed embedded in this genre. Okay, so of course, there's another one. Aside from uh, learning the fantasy itself, we have to talk about one of its aspects. And uh, that's the modern fantasy. So let's talk about modern fantasy because we are very relatable to this one. The history of modern fantasy literature begins with George MacDonald, the Scottish author of such novels as The Princess and the Goblin and Fantasies, the latter of which is widely considered to be the first fantasy novel ever written for adults. So basically, the reason why I include modern fantasy here because Maybe some of us were familiar with fantasy, but most of us are most familiar with one of its classification, which is the modern fantasy. Because, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, most of us here are really familiar and maybe a fan of Harry Potter. And Harry Potter, which is very familiar to all of us, even though it is not made locally to us in here in the Philippines, this is an example or a great example of modern fantasy. Okay, so there we are. After the fantasy, after fairy tale fantasy, let's go now to one of its, you know, basically brother no, or relative, no, which is the fiction. Technically, they're all related, uh, related here because they're all genres of literature. Fiction with strange or otherworldly settings characters. Fiction invites suspension or reality. So basically, fiction is just like how uh, fantasy really moves. The difference here is that basically fiction talks about the things that are unreal. So we, we cannot really emphasize magical or what we call um, something that is humoristic. No? Um, in, in terms of the context of fiction, but fiction itself only explains that something is not existing. So let's go now to the trivia given for the fiction. The word fiction comes from the Latin word fictum, which means created. So it means it is grass. The idea is created. There is a good way to remember what function or fiction is. If it has been created or made up by somebody, it is fiction. Fiction can be written or told or acted on stage in a movie, on television, or radio. Usually, the purpose of fiction is to entertain. So, it, there are a, a large variety of ways where people can be entertained, and fiction is one of the helping factors of that. No, So, uh, it is created. So, the imaginative skill of someone who is going to create a story Basically, a fiction lover no, has to address the things that will entertain the people. No? So that's basically the concept of fiction. Well, that's not actually really that far to the concept of fantasy, but they are just playing it together. So basically, fantasy is fiction as well because both of these things are unrealistic things. But people are entertained, people are inspired, people are motivated. That's why their presence is really, really impactful for those who love them. Okay, so that's generational, that's revolutionary. After the fiction, okay, as we all tackle and we can understand the origin of this, let's go now to the folklore. Yeah. The song stories, myths, and proverbs of a people are folk as handed down by word of mouth. So basically, it's about uh, the oral tradition that occurs in a certain way or so certain country that made the certain tradition to be famous or the story to be famous. Just like how, you know, the stories were handed here in the Philippines, no? especially the, the cuento of um, Aswang, for example, the Manananggal, um, the Capre. No? So another trivia about the Capre is that Capre is not basically uh, a human, which is a toll. No? So basically, naging description. it becomes a description over time. But Capre comes from the word Kafir, which means you are not one with the Muslims. It means if you're a traitor, it means you're a dirty Person. It means that you you committed something that is you know uh, illegal no or something that 
well, basically, you are against no, the Muslim, then you are a kafir, then dun galing basically yung concept of kapre. And as wang, as what, what we had it down is that, um, as wang, uh, they don't have as wang in, uh, for example, part of Cordillera, they don't have that, no? Uh, mostly sa kapis lang, no? So that's how it, it uh, incorporates, no? People uh, telling the stories. But then, there are certain places who were not affected by the culture itself. And sometimes, the context is really, really different from the real um, origin of the word. Okay? So that's how folklore works. That's how creative it is. Okay? So let's go now to the another facts. Folklore is the body of expressive culture, including stories, music, dance, legends, oral history, proverbs, jokes, popular beliefs, customs, and more within a particular people. It's a very, very large variety of being talked about here. This also includes the oral traditions of that culture, subculture, or group. The academic and usual ethnographic study of folklore is sometimes called folkloristic. So there is a term called for those who study folklore. That's Folkloristics. Said it again? Folkloristics. Very good grade 7 students. I'm really impressed with your activeness and enthusiasm in our class. After the, uh, basically the folklore, let's go now to basically one of my favorites since I'm a history lover. Historical fiction. Story with fictional characters and events in a historical setting. Okay, so basically it's about the fiction that lies within the setting of a true event situation. So, it is easily for us to grasp what historical fiction is. But did you know, General Luna, a 2015 historical biopic film depicting General Antonio Luna's leadership of the Philippine Revolutionary Army during the Philippine-American War, is a great example of historical fiction. So, Sir, you might ask, how, uh, how come that this um, movie is an example of historical fiction when in fact it is, um, it is largely you know, encouraged by so many, highly encouraged by so many historians to, to, to just uh, watch no, for all of us? No? What is fiction about that? We have to remember, I will go back to the definition, story with fictional characters and events in a historical setting. If you're going to watch no, uh, General Luna, you're going to encounter one man that named Joven Hernando, played by Mr. Aaron Veraflor, a very, very great actor. No? Sino si Joven? Well, basically, Joven is a representation of youth during that time. But basically, he's not a character from our history. So to make the, 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 the movie more interesting, especially for the children, I, for the youth to be uh, revolutionary in terms of their mindset, we have to put in conversation of General Luna with, uh, with, a, with, with a young guy. Uh, where we, we're in, um, General Luna is telling to, to that guy, Joven, that the vision of the Philippines, the greatest of the Philippines, the greatest of independence, so that we can all relate to the concept of nationalism, independence, and... Um, Basically, the Philip, uh, the, the Philippine uh, concept of freedom that we must all engage, we must all embrace as Filipinos. So that's the fictional side of General Luna. But aside from that, I don't have any problem with how the events are being portrayed, especially by Mr. John Arcilia, a very great actor who played the role General Luna. Let's go now to the next one, which is the horror. Okay. Horror, fiction in which events evoke a feeling of dread in both the characters and the reader. Guys, <laughs> for those who are scared of ghosts, I'll just remind you, horror is a fiction. So don't worry, ghosts, maybe in some, you know, in literary judgment is not true. It is part of the fiction. So it, it will never be real in the context of literature. Okay, so we are all familiar to the horror. It way, the way it catch our attention, the way it made us uh, struggle in sleeping all night. So that's how we really encountered everything in terms of the context of horror. Let's go now to another fact to be learned about horror. The 18th and 19th century saw a huge rise in the horror fiction with the advent of the gothic horror genre. Many consider Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto to be the first true horror novel inspired by medieval history and artifacts. So just like the music, just like the paintings, just like the poetry, horror is also or largely influenced by history. 
and sometimes we can blame history that the reason why we have horror today is because of history. Yeah, maybe. But of course, that's part of art. That's part of context. That's part of the reasons why we study different genres. Not just for us to not be scared of horror, but because we have to understand everything so that maybe in the future, you will going to choose or to decide as an English teacher, a literature teacher, then you cannot be scared of horror because you know it's just pure literature and art based from history. So yeah, we understand what horror is and the feeling it brings to us. Let's go now to its uh, different version, which is the humor. Now, if horror were going to frighten us, fiction full of fun, fancy, and excitement meant to entertain but can be contained in all genres is the thing humor uh, can offer to us. So this fan fancy excitement meant to entertain. So humor is simply a very, very light general literature, okay, in which we can all engage because being, you know, in a sense of a feeling in which all of us can be uh, engaged in one happiness, in one reason of happiness is very easy to do. Um, there was a kasabihan niya, hindi mahirap tumawa. That's why laughter is the best medicine. No, wala kang gagawin, you just laugh, you just continue to do your thing and then eventually gagaling ka. And that's how humor uh, made its goal within us people in this world okay so another trivia to be discussed here did you know the term humor derives from the humoral medicine wow of the ancient greeks which taught the balance of fluids in the human body known as humors controlled human health and emotion so guys i just want to emphasize here the term greeks no as we all know, Greeks contributed so much in this world, uh, the, from theater, the Stoics from the early uh, Greece, that's like they, they contributed to the context of human rights. And now even in humor, they made people think of this kind of genre so that we can all share this together. And people are happy because basically the intention again of humor is to have excitement meant to entertain but can be contained in all genres so yes we're all clear to that after the humor we have now one of my favorite as well the legend okay the legend story sometimes of a national or folk hero which has a basis in fact but also includes imaginative material so it can be fiction or non-fiction realistic or unrealistic the thing here is if that character remarks or being remarkable in terms of how he lives or she lives his or her life then he or she will be considered a legend so we, that's why maybe that's the reason we have the league of legends now but we'll make it literally we can have the league of legends like for example the legendary teachers that we've met over time or the legendary people we've met we consider legends are those who, are, who, who, are, who became remarkable in our uh, own perspective, okay? So let's go now to the context of legend. As we all know what a legend and the greatness of legend is. We are legends. That is the thing that I wanted to tell to all of you first, no? Um, we have to keep on dreaming because we are destined to be great. No, we are all legends. Legends can also be famous or historically significant people, places, art, etc. We sometimes say of someone who is extremely famous that they are a legend or of legendary fame. So basically, just like what I have said earlier, this could be a man of history. This could be a man of remarkability, man that really changed the way things are done. So for example, Michael Jordan, the basic example of this, changed the way basketball is being appreciated from a game that is being uh, played for tall people. He revolutionized it and he created some of the early moves in the NBA and basketball world so that people, even if those who are not tall, can play this and can play this creatively because of his, um, you know, because of what he did. Many people are inspired. Okay, so just like Michael Jordan, we can be our own Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Michael Phelps. Even if you're name is not michael you can be a legend okay so after the legend let's go now to the mystery fiction deals with the solution of a crime or the unrevealing of secrets Woo! spill the tea like for example <laughs> just like all of us um usually tell spill the tea right so unrevealing of secrets okay so basically that's the root word unrevealing of secrets solution to a crime something that really makes you interesting about solving a certain problem that's what we call mystery let's go now to the additional information mystery fiction or mystery story book novel is fictional work in which a professional or amateur detective investigates and solves a crime mystery again there is an involvement of what we call um, a detective to this one. So 
your grade 7 students, you are all familiar with Detective Conan, okay? It has something to do with mystery because, you know, before you can conclude the, the thing that might happen before a crime, we can all agree that what's happening around the scenario is what we call a mystery. Sometimes attorney is used to refer as so supernatural and seems suspense stories and thrillers. So it's going to be not supernatural because maybe the reason for a mystery is something that we can't explain literally or something that we can explain but it has to be methodotic, method, uh, it has to um done through methods so that we can all um solve the crime. So basically, if you're going to watch some of the mystery movies, then sometimes you become part of the detective, okay? You become part of those, um, you know, um, conversing people who are telling to the, to the, to, to the man beside him, uy, siya yung pumatay. Uy, siya yung hindi, hindi, hindi siya yung pumatay. Something like that. So you have that kind of consciousness in your mind that you're part of the program. Let's go now to the next one, which is very familiar again, the mythology. Legend or traditional narrative open based in part on historical events that reveals human behavior and natural phenomena by its symbolism. Of and pertaining to the actions of the gods. So basically, that's the, the, the basic idea that we know about mythology, right? It is related to gods. No? So we have the different uh, kinds of mythology. We have the Philippine here. We have Amanikable, no? um, the god of hunt here in the Philippines. We have the Norse mythology. We have the Roman mythology. Of course, the very famous, as we all know, the Greek mythology. You know? If we're going to tell Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, then basically we're going to talk about that uh, mythology. Okay, so after, you know, getting the or grasping the basic concept of mythology and how it plays around, and maybe some of you already encountered this in many ways, watching this, for example, is some social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, or Instagram, or maybe some of sites like YouTube, then you can actually uh, have the different um, knowledge about mythology. You can share it to us you know, when, um, you know, when time permits us to do so. Okay, so let's go now to the information added to this. Um, genre. There are four basic theories of myth. Okay, those theories are the rational myth theory, functional myth theory, structural myth theory, and the psychological myth theory. The rational myth theory states that myths were created to explain natural events and forces. Okay, so uh, the counting um konting padaan lang dito, no? Basically, mythology also explains and actually enters what we call um, um kasab uh, what we call yung mga pamahiin, no? The natural events and forces that occurs within our society, within our nature, so that it has the explanation. Well, the contribution really, for me, in my perspective of how I see mythology's contribution to this is that we will not be scared of the reason. Like, for example, maybe the reason where their thunder is because of Zeus, then wow, Zeus, no? We can, we can uh, appreciate the majesty, the, the, the magical uh, being Zeus is, no? So we can all appreciate the power of him because of the thunder. Kesa naman sabihin natin na, ay, may kinakasal na tikba lang, kaya may kidnat, di ba? So it, it, it might frighten some people. So yeah, mythology can make everything fine and acceptable. Okay, because it sounds great. And of course, it's really, really, you know, um, interesting for people to learn. So that's how advantageous mythology is and how that's how it impacts the context in terms of... Okay, so after the mythology, the next one is poetry. Basically, one of my favorite. It's about verse and rhythmic writing with imagery that creates emotional responses. So just like other uh, literary forms, Poetry also hits the emotion of someone who reads and appreciates this. So another fact that we stated about this is the oldest written poem is the Epic of Gilgamesh originating from Babylon. In it, we have the, so the story of a king, Gilgamesh, who was half god, half man. It is believed that the Epic of Gilgamesh is around 4,000 years old. So Really, that comes from far, right? So that's very, very great thing to know. The next one is the realistic fiction. Story that can happen and is true to life. From the word itself, realistic. Another additional information that we have to know is realistic fiction is a story written about events that did not actually happen but could happen. There's a potential that the situation might occur in time because all the settings, characters, as well as the events are all 
realistic materials. The people, events, and places may be real, yes. It is a classification of literature containing stories that could actually happen in a time and setting that is plausible and contains realistic characters. So the next one is science fiction. So we have the realistic fiction, historical fiction. Let's now have the science fiction. Story based on the impact of actual, imagined, or potential science, usually set in the future or on other planets. So the setting is very, very futuristic where all of the people from now can, can just imagine but can happen potentially in our future. Additional information to be known is that science fiction is often about the future. It can be about imagining new science and inventions such as spaceships, time machines, and robots. Science fiction stories are often in a world that is very different from the real world. They can have science and tools that do not exist in reality. Science fiction stories often take place on other worlds. There are often alien creatures. So there we are, the additional information about the all we love science fiction. Now, as we all know the different literary genres, no? its meaning and some of its interesting facts, let's now proceed to our first activity for this session. Miss May Angela Kakananta, my partner here, is waiting for all of us, and she's so excited to meet all of us. So class, let's continue the same activeness and energy we have here in this session and answer the activity as well as the quiz provided for today. So that will be all on my part. Again, my name is Vince Clay Mark Jara M. Amabilis. Thank you for All right. So thank you, Sir Vince. Now, as we all know the different literary genres, its meaning, and some of its interesting facts, let's now proceed to our first activity for this session. The task is to read the selection, Plant Like the Bamboo by Ismael Mayrari. Now, there's a file given here, but since teaching is also loving, I will provide a narration for your class. Okay, let's begin. There is a story in Philippine folklore about a mango tree and a bamboo tree. Not being able to agree as to which was the stronger of the two, they called upon the wind to make the decision. The wind blew hardest. The mango tree stood fast. It would not heal. It knew it was strong and sturdy. It would not sway. It was too proud. It was too sure of itself, but finally the root gave away and it stumbled down. The bamboo tree was wiser. It knew it was not as robust as the mango tree, and so every time the wind blew, it bent its head gracefully. It made loud protestation, but let the wind have its way. When finally the wind got tired of blowing, the bamboo tree stood still in all its beauty and grace. The Filipino is like the bamboo tree. He knows that he is not strong enough to withstand the onslaught of superior forces, and so he yields. He bends his head gracefully with many loud protestations. Can he survive? The Spaniard came and dominated him for more than 300 years. And when the Spaniard left, the Filipino still stood, only much richer in experience and culture. The American took place of the Spaniard. They used more subtle means of winning over the Filipinos to their mode of living and thinking. The Filipinos embraced the American way of life more readily than the Spaniard or you promises thereafter. Then the Japanese came like a storm, like a plague of locusts, like a pestilence, rude, relentless, cruel. The Filipino learned to bow his head low, to cooperate with the Japanese in their holy mission of establishing the co-prosperity spirits. The Filipino had only hate and contempt for the Japanese, but he learned to smile sweetly at them and thank them graciously for their benevolence and magnanimity. And now that the Americans have come back and driven away the Japanese, those Filipinos who profited most from cooperating with the Japanese have been loudest in their protestation of innocence. Everything is as if the Japanese had never been in the Philippines. 
for the Filipinos would welcome any kind of life that the God would offer him. That is why he is contented and happy and at peace. The sad plight of other people of the world is not his. To him, as to that ancient oriental poet, the past is already a dream. And tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness. And tomorrow is a vision of hope. This may give you the idea that the Filipinos is a philosopher. Well, he is. He's not evolved a body of a philosophical doctrines, much less has he put them down into a book. Like Kant, for example, or Santayana, or Confucius. But he does have a philosophical outlook on life. He has a saying that life is like a wind. Sometimes it is up, sometimes it is down. The monsoon season comes, and he has to go undercover. But then the sun comes out again, the flower bloom, and the birds sing in the trees. You cut off the branch of a tree, and while the marks of the bolo are still upon it, it begins to shoot forth new branches. Branches that are the promise of the new color, new fragrance, and new light. So as we go along in the story, we will meet some words we have as we have with asterisk and an underline. These are the unfamiliar words that we will tackle or have a little explanation of what the meaning of it or the references. So for this slide, we have bolo. So bolo is a Filipino word usually used in cutting bamboos and cheese. During the Philippine Spanish Revolution, bolos are used by the Cataponeros to fight against the Spaniard. So moving on, Everywhere about him is a lesson in patience and forbearance that he does not have to learn with difficulty. For the Filipinos' lives in a country from which the gods lavish their gifts aplenty, he does not have to worry about the morrow. Tomorrow will be only another day. No winter of discontent. A philosophy his possessions. There is the land and there is the sea with all the riches that one can desire. There is plenty to spare for his friends, for neighbors, and for everyone else. No wonder that the Filipinos can afford to laugh. For the Filipinos endowed with saving grace of humor. This humor is earthly as it fits. One who has not indulged in deep contemplation, but is, it has enabled the Filipinos to shrug his shoulders in time of adversity and say to himself, Bahala na. So, Bahala na is a Tagalog phrase which really means Bathala na. Bathala means referring to God, which literally means just leave everything to God or God will provide. Okay? The Filipino has often been accused of being indolent and of lacking initiative. And he has answered back, that no one can help be indolent and lacking in initiative who lives under the torrid sun which saps the vitality. This seeming lack of vitality is, however, only one of his means of survival. He does not allow the world to be too much with him. Like the bamboo tree, he let the winds of chances and circumstances blow all about him, and he is unperturbed and serious. The Filipinos, in fact, has a way of escaping from the religious problems of life. Most of his art is escapist in nature. Escapist. His father, his forefather, followed in the Moro Moro, the Awit, and the Corridor. They love to identify themselves as a gallant knight battling for the favors of her ladies or the possession of hallowed place. And now he himself love to be lost in the truth and modern romance and adventure. Okay, before we tackle all these underlying letters, let's go back to the other slide because we miss an, a phrase here. So, we have here the N. The Filipinos has often been accused of being indolent and lacking of initiative and he has answered back that though one has help, can help him being indolent and lacking initiative who lives under the tourist sun which saps the vitality. So for this phrase, this phrase refers to Dr. Rosario's defense of the colonial Spaniard 
accused of the indolence of the Filipinos. It was published in, a, in La Solidaridad in Madrid. His essay, written in Spanish, was in English and titled Indolence of the Filipinos. So going back to the slide. Okay, these underlined letters. Moro Moro, the Awit, and the Corridor. So first, let's go to um, Awit. Awit is a form of Filipino poetry very popular during the Spanish occupation in the Philippines. One best example is the Florante at Laura. Then we have the Moro Moro. A Moro Moro is a play famous during the Spanish occupation in the Philippines. It seems always depict the fights between a Christian and a Muslim, who in the end, the Christian being always depicted as the protagonist, win the sad fight. Then we have, lastly, we have Curido, a form of Filipino poetry very popular during the Spanish occupation in the Philippines. It comes from the word Corrido in Spanish. In Spanish. One of the best known Corrido in the story is the story Ibong or the Adarna Bird. Now let's move on to another slide. This gallantry towards women, especially comely women, is a manifestation of his romantic turns of mind. Consequently, in no other place in Orient are women so respected, so adju adulated, and so pampered. For his women have enabled the Filipinos to look upon the vicissitude of fortune as the bamboo trees regard the angry blast of blustering wind. The Filipinos is eminently suited to his romantic roles. He is slender and he is wary. He is nimble and graceful in his movements. His voice is soft. He has the gift of language. In what other places in the world can you find a people who can carry on a fluent conversation in at least three language? So, three language, it refers to Spanish, English, and Filipino language. During the time that the author is writing these pieces, it is notable that Filipinos are required to study this three language. Can you imagine? Three language, like even me having hard time to study different other language than just Tagalog and English. And could you imagine from before where we are required to study at least three language? So let's now move on to the next slide. So this gift is another means by which the Filipinos have managed to survive. There is no insurmountable barrier between him and any of the people who have come to live with him. Spanish, Americans, and Japanese. The foreigners do not have learned his language. He easily managed to master theirs. Verily, the Filipinos is like the bamboo tree. It is raised in its ability to adjust itself to the peculiar and in inexplicable whims of fate. The bamboo tree is his expressive and symbolic national tree. It, has, it will have to be not the molag or the nara, but the bamboo. So now we finish the story. Is it, isn't it amazing how the Filipinos actually went through all of this and still we managed to still stall and still be who we are right now? So as we finish the story, we will have few questions we have to answer. So here are the answer. After reading the story, we will need to answer this. So you can post the video and answer this question. So for number one, what is the story all about? Number two, if you will become a tree, who will you choose to be? A mango tree or a bamboo tree? Number three, in this selection, the speaker compares Filipino to a bamboo tree. What do you think is the reason? Number four, as a Filipino, will you consider yourself like a the bamboo? Why or why not? Number five, what specific Filipino's characteristic are you proud of and why? So you can pause the video now and answer all of these on your own notes. So moving on, let's move on to activity two. So direction, the direction for activity two is name some traits you believe all Filipinos share by completing the tables below. Explain why you think that is a trait common to Filipinos. So for this activity, you can give at least three traits and explanation for each trait, three as the minimum and five as the maximum. Okay, you can pause the video once again to answer this question, or this activity rather. Okay, so now let's move on to our quiz. 
So we have 10 item quiz. All you have to do is write T if the statement is true or F if it's false. So I'm expecting all students to be honest in here. You have to pull, um, you have to pass a screenshot or a picture of your answer in our group chat. So we will check if the answer is wrong and right. After reading the piece, we will answer it. Okay. You can also post the piece, I mean the video, if you see, if you think that I'm reading it too fast or you can keep up with the piece. Okay. So let's move on. So for number one, the Filipinos cannot be compared to anything. Number two, the Filipinos bend its way, just like the bamboo tree, when there are problems but remain standing after. Number three, the Filipinos are submissive but know when to act or fight. Number four, they never learn to fight for their freedom. They are dependent on their other races. Okay, number six, the Filipinos were once ruled by the foreign conquerors. Number seven, they are easily influenced by other people. Number eight, they are friendly and good communicators. Number nine, they can easily adjust to their community and environment. Number 10, the essay gave us an idea that the Filipinos identify identity is a product of other countries' influence. So now, we're done reading the question for this quiz. Let's now answer it. So for number one, number one is true. Because Filipinos cannot be really compared to anything. Number two, the Filipinos bend and sway just like the bamboo when there are problems but remain standing after. Just like what is said in the story, it is true. Number three, the Filipinos are submissive but know when to act or fight. Okay, this is true because we all know how Filipinos fight for their freedom. Okay, number four, they, are, they never learn to fight for their freedom. Okay, just like what I said, or in 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 connection to number three, number four is false because Filipinos learn to fight for their freedom and independence and various revolutionary movement formed during the time of occupation. It's a strong basis for this. Okay, number five, they are dependent on other races. Number five is also false because Filipinos are good culture observers. But to form our identity and our ancestor, early leaders and heroes did that first before us. All right, let's move on to number six. So for number six, it's true. Um, the Filipinos were once ruled by foreign conquerors. We have Spanish, we have Americans, we have Japanese. Okay, number seven, they are easily influenced by other people, which is also true where we absorb the culture of others easily. Number eight, they are friendly and good communicators, which is also another true. Number nine, they can easily adjust to their community and environment. Number nine is also true. It shows how we are conquered by Japanese, Americans, and Spaniards, but we're still standing still just like us, and we were able to adapt and adjust to the community and environment that they put us in. Okay, lastly, number 10. The essay gave us an idea that the Filipinos' identity is a product of other countries' influence. This number is false because what the essay gave us is an idea about Filipinos' flexible characteristic and special, special traits. So now that we finish the quiz, let's now proceed to our homework. So for our homework for today, we have to construct a slogan or a quotable quotes that tell us something about being a strong Filipino. Write it on a piece of cardboard, design the cardboard, and cut it as the size of a bookmark. Put a ribbon on it and feel free to add more design for better output. You just need to send the picture in our group chat and, sh and show us your work and we will really be seeing on what is showcased in that picture okay here are your presenters we have sir vince Kermarger amabilis and may angela and kakananta so and now the session ends thank you for listening my name is may angela m kakananta and together with sir vince amabilis we would like to tell you that it takes a great deal of history to produce a little literature
God bless and goodbye class. Thank you.